to sing a couple of songs with my great friend John Roberts, an English folk singer who arrived in America just about the same time as I did myself. Uh, uh, and uh, we've been collaborating since the mid 1970s and various uh, uh, festivals and concerts and we've sung together more times than I can really count. And in the last series of By Memory Inspired, we took a song written by Ned Harrigan and David Brame in New York. Uh, and we, we looked at it uh, as it was written and then uh, what happened the song when it was in oral tradition. And uh, we really enjoyed doing that. So this time around, we're going to sing um, two songs uh, where the melody was written by the late uh, Peter Bellamy, uh, a great English folk singer. And I met him back in the 1970s when I was in London with the Johnsons. He was a member of a group, The Young Tradition. And the words were written as poems by Rudyard Kipling, who was, of course, a great supporter of uh, British imperialism. And uh, so what am I doing uh, a song written by a supporter of British imperialism? Well, um, First of all, uh, I, I certainly would support what our president, Michael D. Higgins, a man with whom I'm well acquainted, um, said and wrote, uh, it's quoted here in the Guardian newspaper, um, on a seminar on imperialism, which he helped to organize on the 25th of February this year, 2021. And he said, a feigned amnesia around the uncomfortable aspects of our shared history will not help us to forge a better future together, he said, contrasting British forgetfulness with Ireland's reflections on its war of independence and partition a century ago. This is quoted in The Guardian. And he said, I am struck by a disinclination in both academic and journalistic accounts to critique empire and imperialism. Openness to an engagement in a critique of nationalism has seemed greater and while it has been vital to our purposes in Ireland to examine nationalism, doing the same for imperialism is equally important and has a significance far beyond British-Irish relations. Now, I would certainly support uh, President Higgins and all his commentary quoted there. But uh, as far as Kipling is concerned, I've always been struck uh, by the power of his literature and how nuanced uh, when it comes down to the, the business of war, the grittiness and horrors of war, and especially to the plight of enlisted men uh, in the British Army, how understanding he seemed to be and uh, how, in a sense, contradictory he often has been in his writings. Also, his connection with the Irish troops uh, in, in, uh, in, the, in the British Army, uh, the Irish regiments, uh, is found uh, all over the place, for instance, uh, in one of his greatest novels, Kim, uh, the central figure is Kimball O'Hara, and he's the orphan son of an Irish soldier serving in the British Army, grows up in Lahore in India, and, and the whole thing plays out um, and has an Irish backdrop to it. Um, I always remember my father reading to me that great poem of Kipling's If, and, and standing out the lines which I remember to this day, uh, if you can meet with triumph and disaster, and treat those two impostors just the same, then you are a man, my son. I was always impressed by that and also by Jungle Book uh, and by Kipling's various writings uh, on the East, uh, which were always somewhat contradictory. For instance, in this great book, Romancing the East, written by my great late friend, Jerry Hopkins, who invented rock journalism with his book, uh, No One Gets Out Here Alive, uh, Alive on Jim Morrison and the Doors. Um, he quotes Kipling saying, now it is not good for the Christian's health to hustle the Aryan brown, for the Christian riles and the Aryan smiles, and he weareth the Christian down. At the end of the fight is a tombstone white with the name of the late deceased and the epitaph drear, a fool lies here who tried to hustle the East. Peter Bellamy set uh, The Road to Mandalay, one of my favorite Kipling poems, uh, to music in his great album uh, that came out in 1977, just four years after I left London to go to America. And in that uh, unforgettable album, The Barrack Room Ballads, he set a lot of those ballads to, to music. And The Road to Mandalay was one. I actually discovered The Road to Mandalay uh, in, um, 
in my, uh, during my first visit to Burma in 2001. Uh, and uh, in fact, there's a picture here that uh, you, you will see now of me and John Murphy playing three years later in Bagan in central Burma. And at the top of the picture, you'll see a little stretch of water. Well, that is the road to Mandalay, which actually really is the Ayarawadi River. Now, going back to the 1960s and my time in Limerick CBS, we used to have a very good hurling team uh, and we played other, uh, other great schools in Munster and there were trains chartered to the games, usually in Buttevant or Charleville in County Cork, neutral territory when we were playing the Cork teams especially. And I remember we used to gather on the sidelines and we'd all sing, Yarra Wadi, Yarra Wadi, yup, 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 we're going to win the hearty cup. And eventually we did. So there must have been some part of it. But it was all these years later that I discovered that Yarrawaddy is actually the Ayarrawaddy River, the road to Mandalay. And on paddle boats, the British used to um, bring down the, the, the fruits of imperial plunder, uh, the hardwood, uh, the teak woods, uh, the rubies and sapphires and, and the rice and ship them out back to the motherland and to other countries. Uh, the, the spoils of, of empire, which as George Orwell said in his memorable first novel, which was Burmese days, he was serving as a policeman in Burma at the time. He said that imperialism is carried out always at the point of a gun or a bayonet. Um, but anyway, the road to Mandalay always appealed to me. It was very poetic. Uh, it was set to music a few times. I think Frank Sinatra even recorded it back in the day, and I was never very fond of that version. But when I heard Peter Bellamy's version, I liked it right away. Uh, and uh, even sailed on the Arawadi River. Well, it didn't really sail, it was a paddle boat, uh, and uh, just went slightly north of Bagan and back again. So I can say that I was on the road to Mandalay. And I'm going to do it here with John Roberts, and he'll be on the concertina singing harmonies. The road to Mandalay. By the old gold mine pagoda, looking lazy at the sea, there's a Burmese girl a sitting, and I know she thinks of me. When the wind is in the palm trees, those temple bells do say, Come you back, you British soldier, come you back to Mandalay. On the road to Mandalay, where the old flotilla lay. Can't you hear them paddles chunkin' from Rangoon to Mandalay? On the road to Mandalay, where the flying fishes play, and the dawn comes up like thunder out to China across the bay. When the mist is on the rice fields, and the sun is setting low, she'd get her little banjo and she'd sing, call me, call me. With her arm around my shoulder and her cheek against my cheek We used to gaze at steamers and the hatless piling teak Elephants of piling teak in the squidgy sludgy creek Where the silence sung so heavy he was half afraid to sleep on the road to Mandalay, where the flying fishes play, and the dawn comes up like thunder out to China across the bay. Ah, but that is all behind me, long ago and far away, and there ain't no buses running from the banks to Mandalay, and I'm what the ten-year soldier tells When you hear the east a-calling You won't never eat naught else No, you won't eat nothing else But them spicy garlic smells And the sunshine and the palm trees And those tinkly temple bells On the road to Mandalay Where the flying fishes play and the dawn comes up like thunder out to China across the bay. Well, I'm sick of wearing leather on these gritty paven stones, and the dreary English weather keeps the fever in the bones. As I walk with fifty housemaids from Chelsea to the Strand, and I hear them talk of loving, but what do they understand? Beefy face and rough. 
be as Lord, what do they understand? I've a neater, sweeter mane in the cleaner, greener land on the road to Mandalay, where the flying fishes play, and the dawn comes up like thunder out to shine across the bay. Where the best is like the worst And there ain't no Ten Commandments And a man can raise a curse For those temple bells are calling And this there I want to be By the old mole mine pagoda Looking lazy at the sea On the road to Mandalay Where the old float to the lay And our sick lay under awnings as we sail along our way on the road to Mandalay, where the flying fishes play, and the dawn comes up like thunder out to China across the bay. The song I'm going to sing is called Philadelphia. It's another of uh, Peter Bellamy's settings of Kipling poetry. And uh, being about Philadelphia, it's a song that has uh, strong connotations for both Mick and myself, who have connections in that city. Mick moved there in particular to do his PhD when he first moved over to the States, and he made it his home for quite a long time afterwards. Now, in 1889, Kipling left India to move back to, to England, and he decided to take the long way round. He'd been fired from his newspaper job over there. He was just starting to make his name as a writer. He came across the Pacific and came across the United States, um, visiting uh, people that he knew of uh, along the way, selling short stories when he could to, uh, to publishers to help support him on his travels. Uh, he came to Philadelphia and uh, met the editor of the Enquirer, the newspaper. Uh, the Enquirer explained that they didn't uh, deal in that sort of stuff. Uh, they didn't print fiction, uh, at least not uh, not on purpose. But um, what the editor did was introduce him to a gentleman about town who showed Kipling some of the sights for a few days. We know some of this because 30 years later, a newspaper man, a, a, a journalist uh, from New York City, came to Philadelphia sort of researching some of the connections between Kipling's poem, the characters and places in Kipling's poem, and the city itself. And he met the same editor of the, uh, of the Enquirer and, uh, and interviewed him. Now, the song is filled with characters some of whom are historical characters from the from the Philadelphia of the 1790s, and some of whom are Kipling's own creations, the characters from his stories. And Philadelphia was attached to one of the stories in the book Rewards and Fairies. Uh, the character most involved there is a gypsy fiddler named uh, Pharaoh Lee, uh, who jumped ship in uh, Philadelphia, which is why Pennsylvania features in these stories, which were mostly children's stories about children who had met Puck, the last of the little people in England, who through his magic was showing these children bits of English history traveling through space and time, bits of English history and bits of American history as well. Now, Peter Bellamy was a very interesting character. He was something of an unsung genius, I think larger than life. Uh, he uh, dressed extravagantly. He embraced the concept of punk as it related to folk music, which is a very strange thing at times. But he, 
his, his settings of poetry and his singing were, 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 were quite spectacular. He also, in the 1970s, wrote, based on a story he'd heard, he wrote a folk opera called The Transports, which is still presented to this day by various groups in Britain. Uh, we've even mounted a production of it at the Old Songs Festival just outside Albany, New York, where I am. He was definitely a very creative singer and very much a larger-than-life character. Like many creative people, he, uh, he unfortunately had his ups and downs. He didn't feel that he got the recognition he deserved. He had a hard time making a living, and very sadly, he took his own life in 1991. But he left this incredible legacy of Kipling songs set to music, sometimes adapted to tra traditional tunes, often of his own composition, the ballad opera him, uh, the, that he wrote, the transport, and memories for anybody who ever met him. If you ever met Peter Bellamy, you'd never forget him. And this is, this is his setting, this is Philadelphia. You're off to Philadelphia in the morning You mustn't take my stories for a guide There is a little left indeed Of the city you will read of And all the folk I write about to die There's a few will understand If you mention Talleyrand Or remember what his cunning and his skill did and the cabmen and the wharf do not know counts in door, nor the church in Philadelphia we build in. It is gone, gone, gone with lost Atlantis. Never say I did give you warning. It's 1793, it was there for all to see, but it's not in Philadelphia this morning. If you're off to Philadelphia in the morning You mustn't go by anything I've said For the big no southern stages have been laid aside for ages But the limited will get you there instead Toby Hunt, he can't be seen at 140 North 2nd Street No matter when you call And you'll have to search in vain for the washhouse down the lane where young Pharaoh played the fiddle at the ball. It is gone, gone, gone with thieves of the golden. Never say I did give you warning. In 1794, it was a famous dancing floor, but it's not in Philadelphia this morning. You're off to Philadelphia in the morning You must telegraph for rooms at some hotel And you need and try your luck At Epley's or the Buck Though the father of his country loved them well It is not the slightest use To inquire for Adam Goose Or ask where Pastor Meader has removed it So you must treat as out of date the stories I relate on The church in Philadelphia He loved so He is gone, gone, gone With Martin Luther Never say I did give you warning In 1795 He was rest his soul alive But he's not in Philadelphia This morning Philadelphia this morning And I wish to prove the truth of what I say I pledge my word you'll find The pleasant land behind Unaltered since Red Jacket rode that way 
Still the pine would scent the noon, still the catbird sings his tune, still autumn sets the maple forest blazing. Still the grapevine through the dusk flings a soul compelling musk. Still the fireflies in the corn make night amazing. They are there, there, there with earth immortal. Citizens, I give you friendly warning. The things that truly last when men and times are past, they're all in Pennsylvania this morning. They are there, there, there. Earth immortal citizens, I give you friendly warning. The things that truly last when men and times are past, they're all in Pennsylvania this morning.